So previously we looked at the meter uh, and we saw that it would reject it because it failed a certain point for validation. So validation we talked about before is very important uh, to MV MV90. Um, it verifies all the different parameters. That's basically what you set in the meter. So this meter was it's now manually accepted, but it was um, it was rejected. And you see it says status R E parentheses M A in that file so it was re rejected and and it re was rejected because it failed a status error check and, and it, it obviously gave you uh, manual accepted so we're going to take a look at see why it failed the validation so these are some of the things that customers are asking or we'll say that the meter will fail validation okay so let's take a look at the setup for validation so we'll keep this open uh, so we could refer to it at a later date. Again, this is a report control. This tracks all the reporting that are written, written to disk that, that's performed on that, this system. Uh, we'll mon uh, minimize that. We'll go into system controls and we'll take a look at system parameters and we'll take a look at validation. So in our validation, there are interval status. Uh, there's six tabs. Interval status, editing, general channel status, general status, and comparison criteria. So I know the, the interval status is where we have uh, certain things checked. So test mode is not turned on to flag for it. So that's not why it failed uh, uh, because of test mode. So that I could rule out. Uh, these are the things that were CRC, ROM, RAM error checks, uh, error check some errors. If this showed up, this is a serious uh, violation, a serious issue, um, it would check. If there was a problem with the clock and uh, the, the TIM identifies it in the meter, it would fail as a, because it's checked for yes. So anything with yes uh, going to be rejected if it came up as an issue in the event logging. Uh, so here you could set it for no, yes, or warning, okay, where you can issue a warning but not reject the file. Short and long intervals obviously is turned to no. And if this was yes, it would have been rejected because it was a long interval which we had to fix. And obviously, power outages is turned off. So none of these really affected what caused it to reject. If I went to editing, uh, that's totally a uh, different area where you can do auto plugging using previous, uh, present month, previous month, previous year, um, and so on. And that, that's a nice feature for plugging in uh, data without, without, without uh, going through the process manually of, of uh, doing that editing. And then, um, so that's not, that has nothing to do with the meter being rejected. If you look at general statuses, um, here we have interval tolerance. So that's if the intervals found expected in the meter are not equal, then it would yes meaning that it would reject it and this you want to have checked for yes usage tolerance that's the amount of energy that you may anticipate it uh, may exceed a certain value you may want to check that if you if it's not consistent right so we can leave that at no time tolerance if the meter is out of time to so these are all set for no redundant check it's turned on but it's not used there's no meter change or anything so this would not cause it to reject so I can almost rule out um, uh, anything in the system parameters for want for the rejection that we saw so let's take a look at the events uh, triggering so event reference is a really good uh, tool to have or to be able to look at the information that the meter flags for events and I like to use it uh, to go through uh, to setting up certain things that you see in the meter that are, are codes that are flagged and uh, and these codes represent something in the meter so after this event reference comes up um, these are all the things that will flag an error or an issue with the meter so currently I have a lot of these set for ignore um, so if I said if I turn this on to say yes fail the meter because of a pass fail the battery fail uh, I wanted to flag that code and that's a zero one code you would see that show up in the events in the validation it would reject the meter for battery failure uh, the other thing is uh, battery failure and clock 
um, clock error, same thing. Uh, they're all linked together. Basically, if you have a battery failure, you should have a clock error, but you won't necessarily see them show up. It depends on the device type. Um, and these are all the different features. So as I come up, as I go scroll through this, um, I'm going through and I see here, I see yes, set for pass fail. So if the meter gets a zero D, um, zero D in the event code that shows up and it's set, it will turn, it will make this a pass fail, or it would, I should say it would fail because of this pass fail check. Okay. And I set priority and I want it to be the highest priority. Um, the meter power off start, this is something is editable that you can set whatever language you want um, to indicate that uh, there was a reset there. So, um, but you can edit this field. Um, the, the next is a, uh, another one is Omega OD-OM. Again, these are uh, things that can be edited. So these are power outage and it may have uh, it basically indicates it's a power outage and again this is a pass fail so that would if there's a 0d code a 0m mt whatever shows up um, it would it would show up as one of these and it would this would be an event check or failure or a fail validation due to an event check I have AC down if I see a 0e code so what I could do for now just to verify what which ones were which code did it fail um, to show uh, in the events because it's telling me it meet a validation fail because of the event so if I hit manual um, set here and if I look at the end of the validation I, these are test mode data local key all this information but it failed because of one of these um, and it says it failed because it is a status error check, which is what we're talking about here. The events, these are status events that are taking place. So if I made, uh, so it could be meter power, it could be AC power down, it could be operating parameter for it booted up or reprogrammed, and that could have been 11. So let me take this, I'm just going to edit this line and make that no, and I'm just going to save it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see what else. I'm going to just reassign these. Uh, edit and make that no to ignore and just to edit. And again, this is very useful to, to verify what the meter codes represent. So um, if I turn this off, again, no and I'll go through all of this and let's see if we see anything else yes so it's quite extensive list here record a clock change okay so um, if we saw there was a time set that could have been a reason why and that's 15 so let me edit that um, again this is just an example just to show you um, what what's available in MV90 using the codes that it has to show you or set the parameters to fail if uh, or flag when a, something special may have occurred. Okay, so I'm just going to save this. Okay, so I'm I'm going to revalidate the the meter and let's see what shows up in the event. So I've got one, two, three. It's a status error check. It's still, uh, these are still here. Okay, so let's go back. Um, I don't see anything here. Um, let's close this. Um, what we can do also in the event uh, reference, we can look at event reports and find out why the Shark 270 failed. So Shark 270 test. And I want uh, a, a detailed summary and I want to view all the reasons why this may have rejected. So here it comes up. It showed me these are all the events that took place in the meter. It was flash memory event. That's when we updated the new profile. Uh, so if I these these are the codes, the MV90 codes that identified it. So uh, so this gives you an idea. There are 12 events that took place, and it's captured on this uh, meter. 
test mode is error code 59 and so on let's do this let's check the app notes uh, to see what they say uh, what these codes are so in the uh, the MV90 Tim's folder that I have, I have the Shark 270. I'll take a look at the Shark 270. Uh, that's Tim underscore SK27. And that, that has uh, all the information for that Tim. So we talk at decoder files. That's for bringing back register decode readings. Um, and that's a really cool program if you want to look at just filter out reads and running types of register reports. Um, but we are interested in looking at the app notes and see what, what does it tell us in the notes what those codes mean so if i'm just scrolling through typically it's at the end so these are the all the status codes that mv90 are going to flag so if i have if i go back and i just i open up my um, system event and i see that ah uh, let's see if i could bring this all in um on one screen okay so so I have the status codes in the sh in the app note so that's a, a place you want to be f very familiar with it talks about the event co event codes so this meter has all these event codes that correspond to something and that if we turn on those events in the uh, event configuration page that I had uh, for pass fail it would be identified in the in the uh, validation report. So if I look at 59, it's a 59 code 59. If I see 59 in here, here is 59 preset energy from file successful test mode data. So here it corresponds here test mode data. So that tells us um, this is set for flag to flag for test mode as an event which would be rejected in the status report. So this is again this is a This is a very good tool to have uh, to verify uh, certain parameters that may be uh, affected in the meter. Um, whenever uh, this happens, MV90 will flag it, and, and these are the events that it will flag because the, the, the meter recorded it, right? And there's some event that was taking place. So this event codes is, is, is a must read. Um, these are will tell you all the information that you need to know um, that will be captured in the TIM. And so when you look at an MV90 uh, event report like this one here on the right, that will give you all the uh, events. So this will flash events and so on. That's basically we reprogram the meter as we said before. And the test mode, of course, is uh, 59, code 59. And uh, that we were able to, to find here. It says uh, energy preset uh, or test mode data. So Things have happened in this meter, quite a few things. Um, uh, there's a prior flash memory event. Those are the only ones I see that it, it flagged. But again, these are these are events that the meter can capture. But if you look at this um, uh, app notes and you go through this, if you're looking for um, any, uh, if you, you want to capture these events, you have to go into the, the event uh, report configuration file that we looked at previously um, and this is in the events event reference and and you can actually monitor or I should say edit or edit that information to match what it's actually recording here or shown here so um, you know if I look at auto clock sync failure 8f um, I should see it here if I scroll down that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's get to eight F. So eight F comes up as load profile memory access error. So they have here uh, auto clock sync. So maybe that's not it. So um, so the the key is to match those errors like eight F. TD extra. So made if I go down, here it goes. Device the de, time device access error. So that's what that is. Uh, but it really means auto clock sync failure. Uh, so I could edit this line and put auto clock sync error. OK, 
Okay, so any times, and I could set this for yes, pass, fail, and so I've now got this to match what this is reported in the Shark 270. Now, hopefully all the other meters in your system are going to be, if you are using other different meter manufacturer, 8F could mean something else. So you just have to make sure that you, you're consistent with the meter type. For us, it will not be a problem because all our meters, are, our EIG meters, are set up uh, pretty much the same way. Okay, um, so again, that that's pretty much what I wanted to go go over, over with. Uh, so that's pretty much what I wanted to go over in the event part um, to show the event reference and make use of that table because that really tells you what you can and cannot uh, see or or the meter cannot see or flag. And so that, that, that's all from the app notes. Uh, note that uh, all the other meters, the Nexus 1272 or X2 Tim and the uh, Shark 200 might be different. Um, you'd have to look at the Shark 200 and let's, you know what, let's take a look at it. Uh, this is the Shark 200 package. And uh, if I open that up, I'm gonna take a look at the app notes in that one and let's see what does it show? Does it is it as gives you as much information? See, if you look at the app notes for the Shark 200s, not many events here are going to be captured um, in the uh, in the meter. And that's you know when we set this up with Itron, provided the codes so that they could um, write to Tim. This that that's what that's uh, I guess that's all they took took care of or all they can do at the time. So. But that's the Shark 2, uh, uh, 200 Tim. And then if we take a look at the Nexus Tim, which covers 1252, 62, 72, 1450, 1500 plus, um, this, this, um, this app note, if I go in and look at the app notes and try to see what the events look like in this meter. Uh, so we do have certain things, voltage below limits, so if you have low voltage, voltage sag on any one of the voltage, you'll be able to see that flag on, on that report on the validation, come up with failures, current up below limits and so on. Power down, power up, uh, test mode. You always want test mode enabled. Um, you want it, so test mode's 51 in this case, energy reset and things like that. So, but this is, this is um, again, a must read to go through the app notes to verify that you are uh, capturing the events that you need to capture. So I've probably just done a uh, more of a, a little bit more advanced, but it gets even more advanced from here on. So we could close this for now. We could take a look at this. Um, we could close. We could save this and close. Save 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 changes to the event reference database. Yeah, what the heck? We'll save it. Um, so if I do a refresh here. The meter is polling every five minutes. Right now, the time is 4:15, um, and it's posted up until uh, uh, the 16:10 interval, which is the last. It should be going out again. So uh, we'll take a look at the monitor, and we could see here's our Shark 270 test. It's scheduled to go out at 6:417, and so. Uh, that's uh, two minutes from now it'll go out and it's going to post interval data at uh, 415 or 1615 so um, so that's the data directory piece um, uh, with MV90 now I close this I'm closing the data directory um, I could go back to the monitor and uh, again these are tasks that I have some of them are for automatic um, reporting um, and uh, exports so that's what you see these keep uh, showing up on the on the monitor um, the next thing I want to go over is the um, reporting function um, and we'll do that in the next session so but basically uh, this uh, was a retrieval data came in we w looked at validation we looked at the system control section which showed us the system parameters uh, we ran reports from the report control. Uh, we didn't do data export and things like that. Uh, the next session I'm going to cover is reporting and export, uh, I should say, HHF import 
uh, into uh, MV90. Also, um, just cover some of the problems that we we come up with uh, when uh, we set up a meter.